Well, good afternoon. We just thank you for staying tuned to From the Heart Ministries. I am your host, Elder J.D. Milburn, and I have with me my fabulous co-host, none other than the pastor. Dr. Jim Swinney, good to be here with you today. Yeah, it's always good to be back in the studio one more time. And, you know, we, we come here not as a show. And we, we were kind of having a conversation about how things are done and uh, it, with, with churches and services and a lot of things. And sometimes it's just a show that people put on. But the idea in the gospel is not to come forth trying to uh, put on a show. But you, you want to be able to speak the truth, let God work, and let God show out. Uh, that's his job. It is not ours. But, Pastor, one of the things that uh, we, we were just talking about is a crisis in America. And I'm going to let you go ahead and start on that. Hey, you know, there are all kind of crises in America. And if we would just focus in on a few of them, because we're limited in our time, uh, the crisis that our children are really going through uh, this time of the year. And I guess you might be wondering, well, what crisis is my kid going through? Well, kids in school are going through so much that where, you know, I don't really think we as parents really understand what they're going through. They, they deal with bullying every day. They deal with uh, teachers not being able to teach them on their lever because every teacher is not geared to be able to uh, teach in a comprehensive fashion. You know, they, they teach, and I'm, I'm not saying something wrong with their teaching, but every kid can't comprehend the method of every teacher. And every child have their own, and even you and I, we have our own way of learning uh, and our own style of learning. You might learn visib uh, visibly, I might learn mostly verbally. You know, there's mm -hmm. different tactics of learning, but uh, but our teachers off time get into one gear of teaching. So being in that one gear of teaching, it can cause a crisis in a kid's head, you know, because they're feeling, well, why can't I get it? You know, maybe it's not about uh, you can't get it. It's about how it's being conveyed to you. So sometimes we have to rethink the way we're teaching to help our young people to uh, grab hope to what's being taught and being able to run with it. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I was in a meeting uh, not long ago with a, uh, with a group of teachers and counselors and, and some students, and they was just giving the various methods of how to convey a subject of teaching to children. And... and uh, the young people open up uh, uh, about the best way that they could learn. And, and I think, you know, if we listen to our young people sometime, it can bring that crisis down in their life because they're in a state of crisis. And as I say, you know, they're dealing with all the bullying. They're dealing with the, uh, the pressure of, man, I, 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 I'm getting ready to graduate. I, I need to bring my, my SAT score up. I need to uh, make sure I pass this class. I, I fail a couple of classes and I need to make up for it, you know. But yet I don't have nobody to help me uh, get through this. So either I'm not understanding them or they're not understanding me. I think we need to step back a minute and really assess where our kids at and look at what we are doing to see how we can take what we know to be able to help them just where they're at. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of good that you brought that out because uh, even when it comes to doing everything, even when it comes to teaching, and, and, and I can relate this both uh, in the school because I worked in the school system mm -hmm. for several years, uh, and even in teaching people in the church, uh, we have to first of all understand and remember that the scripture lets us know that the wise man is he who learns from all men. Amen. And and just because we we are might be better educated than somebody else doesn't mean that we can't learn things from them. Uh, I, I remember when I used to teach uh, for one of the colleges, and the when when I was being interviewed to to get a position uh, for teaching. Uh, one of the things that was asked of me was, well, uh, how, what, what is your style of teaching? And we talked about it a little bit. And then, then the question was brought up or the idea was brought up, well, uh, 
somebody, you know, somebody can teach 20 years two different ways. And he said, well, let, let me explain to you what I mean. Mm -hmm. He said, you can teach 20 years, uh, one year, 20 times. And I said, well, that, that's absolutely true. In other words, you teach, you teach one specific way, you, you don't deviate from it, and you do that 20 times. He mm -hmm. said, or you can teach 20 years. He said, every time you get a new class, you tweak your method of teaching so that it comes a little bit better for that particular class. You gear whatever it is to that particular class. And see, for me, that makes sense. And, and for those of us that's in the church, this is one of the most important reasons for us to be led by the Holy Spirit. Mm. We don't always understand uh, everything about everybody that we're around, but the Holy Spirit will reveal to us yes, it will. what should be said. Even in preaching, you know, sometimes we, we have our message all lined out. We know just how we want to bring it and what we're going to say. And, and once you start getting into the message, then you go all off and you forget what you were going to say. And, 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 and you just start spewing what the lust the Lord is telling you. Right. And so we, we forget that. But it, it's good when we are understanding that we have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And, and when we're doing this, we're doing what God would have us do for the people. Now, and you, some people say, well, yeah, but that, that doesn't count when it comes to secular learning. Yes, it does. Hmm. It definitely it counts, in, especially then because we are giving our children over to people. We don't know what type of background they have. Uh, we don't know uh, if they're really certified. We don't know much about them necessarily. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand that one of the teachers— are having a hard time because instead of having uh, a few kids uh, in front of them, sometimes they have 30, 35, 40, and even 50 kids stuck up in the classroom. And I've seen this personally. So to be able to teach uh, that many children at one time, that is a job all by itself. But I can guarantee you that out of that 30 to 50 or, or sometimes even more, there are some that are going to catch it on just like that there are some that's going to be like, okay, I got to go a little further. Some like, I have no idea what you just said. So our job is to find ways and methods of teaching, putting forth that word, whether it be secular, as far as the, uh, the reading, the, the writing, the mathematics, or if it be scriptural. Mm -hmm. But we have to know and follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. We, we have to know. And... Just that what you described, that, uh, the total count of kids that's per class, anywhere from 30 to 40, sometimes even more, right there, uh, Elder, is a crisis. It is. It's it a crisis really because, see, look, the teacher is put in a situation to where they have uh, more kids than what they can handle. And not only that, uh, they know for themselves they're not going to be able to convey their teaching to every child. So uh, it, it makes them or puts them in a position to where they are more apt to cater to the highly uh, academic kids yes. than the lower academic kids. And so, 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 so you then broke them apart of the highly academic, highly academic, then the lower academic, and you let the lower academic set aside while you try to push the higher academic. So you bring, we create crisis, and we bring crisis, uh, we, we bring more pressure on it by the way we handle it within the classroom. And, and, and then within that same classroom, uh, because of some being highly academic and some being low on, low on the academic uh, line, uh, you got the bullying. Mm -hmm. so, so, so we create crisis in the classrooms by the way we do things. So w we need to take that pressure out of the classrooms, off of the teachers by lowering the, the number of students in the class and giving everyone an opportunity to be taught on the same level, whether you highly academically or low academically. You know, and that teacher uh, should be versed well enough to where uh, you can manage your high academic kids and surely carry 
uh, your lower ones, to where you can teach, to where they can understand and grab hold to it, to where uh, they gonna have to run a little harder, but yet they're they're in the race. You know, we don't want to just leave them out of the race because they're low on the low academic pole. Yeah, and and see th this uh, ability for our young people to be able to get into a classroom setting or educational setting and be able to learn properly, uh, sometimes it's according to their own speed. Mm -hmm. But this does, is not something that starts once they walk into that classroom in the morning. Right. It, it really is not. And I know with the hustle and bustle and sometimes uh, all we seem to have in a lot of cases is uh, a single parent home. Sometime it's actually a, a, a grandparent, sometimes a single grandparent trying to raise the grandchildren. Uh, but th there are certain things that could be to that child's advantage. Uh, the first thing is to teach them who they are. Mm -hmm. and, and see, we, we have gotten into the, to the genre of trying to uh, compare ourselves to everybody else. Well, that, that's fine in, in some aspects, but I am an individual. As old as I am, I'm still an individual. And I need to have a certain environment around me. And then, and this is, and, and I'm, I'm going to go through a few items very, very quickly. So first of all, treat me as if I'm an individual. Don't compare me to everybody else. Yes. Secondly, I, I remember uh, being at the school early, even as the kids were coming in, and I, I would see uh, little children. And when I say little children, I'm talking about five, six, seven, eight-year-olds getting out of vehicles in the morning to walk up to the school door and they're being called some of everything but a child of God. Hmm. Uh, one, I don't know if they're, if they're hungry, but they're being cussed out all kind of ways, being called some of everything. They're being screamed and yelled at. When they get into the school, they're already starting off, I'll say, with a bad day. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that the, that the start of each day for our children is going to be a good day. And then if they start it off as a good day, when they get into that learning environment, they are more able and more ready to hear than to shut down and refuse to hear anything else that's being said because a lot of times what happens, they come in, they come in angry. I, I've seen kids' faces frowned up, their shoulders are tight, their arms are going straight down, their fists are balled up like they're getting ready to fight any and everything that they come across. So these are type of things start at home. And then when they get into the classroom, the first thing that goes through their mind when the teacher says something to them is, you ain't my mama, you ain't my daddy. So we have to understand that if we can give them a good fresh start mm. every day, it, it even says that our, our day is renewed, our blessings are renewed each and every morning. So if we put that same mindset into our young people, I don't know what you're going to have to face today, but all I know is you can make it. You can make it. You can make it. And then when they get in front of that teacher, then, then they actually might want to hear something that that teacher has to say. And then because they actually have the attitude to want to hear what the teacher has to say, then the teacher is, is feeling a little less stressed and pressed to try to spend all this extra energy and be able to spread it out throughout the 49 other kids that's in the classroom. So true. So th this, this uh, mindset starts at home preferably with a Christian attitude that we are instilling in our children, pray for them before they leave out. Pray for them. You don't have to do it out loud on the way to school. Mm -hmm. While they're on the way to school, if you're still at home, pray for them that they'll have a good day. And, and, if, and if you have uh, oil at home, anoint them. Anoint them. Anoint, anoint them that the Lord will be with them, that the Lord will bless them, and that the Lord's angels will keep every evil away from them. Amen. So this starts at home. Starts at home, and and with that starting at home, believing in Lord Jesus and accepting Him as your Lord, Lord and Savior. Now we have to be an advocate for our kids. We have to hear them yes. on what they are saying as as to relative to what's going on in school, and we have to help them understand 
you know, uh, where they're at. And once we hear them, if we have to go up to the school and advocate for the, on their behalf that they can uh, get what they need, they know they need. Because a lot of kids, you know, they know what they need to uh, to get through the classes they can need to get through. Yes. You know? and, but but if they don't have, if they feel like no one is hearing them, if the parents not hearing them and advocating for them, and and, and the teacher have so much pressure on them and so many students to where they got to reach to, uh, they they hear them but they don't hear them because there's nothing being done about it. So the kid, they leave the kids in in, in a catch to where you know uh, nobody cares. So why should I care? You know, and with that attitude, it brings anger inside the kid because they're frustrated. Mom and dad's not hearing me. The teacher's not hearing me. So why should I even care about going to school, hearing anything that they're trying to say? But if we advocate for them, you know, and let them know, hey, I hear your son. I hear your daughter, you know, and, and, but, and this is what we're going to do. And, and showing them that, hey, I'm going to fight for you to get you what you say you need in order for you to move on. And you work together and you get, uh, you get somebody in that school will hear you and work with you and work with you and your child to get them what they need. But you parents and you as a student have to, as a student you have to convey what's going on. As a parent you have to hear and you have to be their advocate into the school to make sure that uh, what you are hearing it be addressed at the school to where uh, it won't be a continuance in their life and uh, making them feel like nobody hear me, nobody care. Because I think a lot of our kids is getting to that point to where they just don't think anybody care about them and what they're trying to do. But that, and, and that's why I say we as parents have to advocate for our children and we have to make teachers and administrators hear us that they can hear our kid and uh, we as a team give the children exactly what they need. Yeah. And, and see, this is one of the other things that we have to do as a parent. Uh, first of all, our children did not necessarily ask to be here. Mm. And, and secondly, as a parent, it is our responsibility to see about the welfare of our children. And this means more than simply, uh, you know, trying to supply a roof over their head and making mm -hmm. sure they have food and things of that nature. But it even means in regards to the educational process right? Uh, and their educational progress. Uh, you know, sometimes, and, and I, I know when you work those long hours, uh, you, you have to get up early. Sometimes parents have to leave before their children even leave out for school, and, and they don't get home until after the children get home. Mm -hmm. But sooner or later, we have to make time for them. Uh, and this is the reason why it's important to get to know who is around your children on a daily uh, yes. basis. Yes. Get in there and talk to them. And if your child is having a hard time with some particular subject, uh, you, now, you know, here's a good thing. Sometimes you don't even have to go to the school. You, you can email those teachers. You can, mm -hmm. you can do all types of things and say, well, you know, I, my child seems to be having a problem with this particular subject. What can I do at home? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the funny part is with some parents, they're actually learning right along with their child. Yes. And, and there, there's nothing wrong with that. And you and I both know, uh, e even at our age, we are still doing all that we can to learn, not just uh, scripturally speaking, but we try to learn other skills for life. Amen. So uh, we, we have to continue that learning thing. And when our children see us still trying to learn and taking a, uh, a good look at educational opportunities, then we are setting the proper example for them. But again, we have to remember uh, in, in this life, uh, it's there's always going to be a struggle, and when our children see us making it through the struggle, they will understand that they're going to have some times of struggle too. But the same way that you're making it, that they can make it too. And remember, we we want to give uh, the the ring of our children o over to the school system, but the ring of our children and that mindset comes from home. Mm. Whatever we are uh, generally teaching at home, that's what that child is going to take with them throughout the day. 
That's it. That's it. And and and, and that's why we ne need to make sure we are hearing them, and we are conveying positive. Uh, a positive attitude toward them in relation to school, in relation to general uh, work habits. You know, well, we have to uh, convey positivity. If we don't, if we convey negativity all the time, they, 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 they well, they're gonna see that in life in generally. Oh, well, there's so plenty of that. Definitely. So we have to make sure that they see the positive of life and it have to come from us as parents and when they see the positive life they can uh, uh, have something within themselves and say you know I don't care what y'all do I'm gonna do the right thing I'm gonna study and I'm gonna continue to try and do my best you know and that's one of the things that, that we as parents we, we, we need to back down and, and say you know hey uh, are you doing your best and if you're doing your best, you know, then uh, that's all that I require. Now, if you're doing your best and, and you're still falling behind, now, you know, hey, it, it's time to uh, see what's the hold up. Because mm -hmm. there's, a, there, 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 there's some weight there that don't need to be there. You know, whether it uh, be uplifted by conversation, whether it be uplifted by me actually ex exerting myself into the circumstances to help that weight come out. But... If they're doing their best and they're still being held up, we have to get out there and convey uh, uh, something on their behalf so that they can get those uh, stumbling blocks out the way and have a clear path. Mm -hmm. Parents, yes. it's up to us to clear the path for our kids because if we don't do it, we have to ask ourselves a question, who are going to do it? We cannot depend on the teachers of doing it. But we can depend on us because that's our first. That's one of our first jobs. And, and you brought up such a, a phenomenal idea of what how to deal with your own children. Uh, and you, what you said was something that I've done with my kids the whole time they've been in this world. They're all grown now, and I still do the same thing with them. And, and, and I'm going to give you a story. My my son came home with 16 straight card markings with. Uh, 4.0 or better. The 17th, he came home with a 3.0. And, and he brought it to me, and uh, uh, I, I looked at it. I only had one question for him. My question was, son, did you do your best? And he looked at me, he, and he, <laughs> he, he, he must have known what was on my mind. <laughs> oh, he, he looked at me, he, he hesitated, he said, no, sir. I said, well, you know how I am. I said, uh, you have until next card marking to bring me back something better than this, to show me what you can do. That next card, well, as a matter of fact, I actually told him, I said, if, if you don't come back with something better, I'm going to restrict everything you have, including the air you breathe. Yes, y'all heard me say that. You heard me say that, including the air you breathe. He looked at me, and he must have known I meant what I said. <laughs> when he came back with that next car mark, and he had a 3.875. Mm. I looked at it, and I said, son, I said, I only have one question. You know what the question is, don't you? He said, yes, sir. I said, what's the question? He said, did I do my best? I said, did you? He said, yes, sir. He said, dad, I thought I had a 4.0. Uh, he said, I really, really tried to get I thought I had straight A's. And come to find out, the teacher missed one assignment that he turned in. She found it three months later, two or three months later, in her basement at home. Mm. And if he had had that, if she had counted that one assignment, he would have had a 4.0. And, and people were like, well... I've been asked, well, why, why would you be upset with your son? Because he brought home a 3.0. A lot of kids don't do that well. I said, it's not a matter of whether he had a 3.0 or not. I said, he could have came back in with a D average, a D as in Delta, as mm -hmm. in David. I said, I would have been happy with that if I knew that he did his best. I said, but if he came home with a B average, as in boy and beta, I said, I couldn't be happy with that if he did not do his best. Right. All I ever asked of my children is, do your best. Now, will that be the same every single day? No, it won't, because you feel a little different each day. Life affects you in different ways. 
but always give me your best. I expect to, do, to give my best at all times. Mm -hmm. and, and people are like, wow, I, I never really thought of it that way. Now, if you are doing your best and it's not coming up to the level it should, then it's my job to step in and see what I can do to yes. help. Yes. And to get with that teacher. Yes. And, and then work. And then, then not only that, we're going to pray about this thing. Got to. We, we, we're going to pray about it. We're going to ask the Lord for guidance. We're going to do everything that we can so that our family is together and as tight as is possible. And, and my kids will tell you right now, uh, especially my young ones, dad is my best friend. Because whatever happened, he's got my back. But I know what I have to do. And he's kept with that. My, my young people have kept with that. And I've even had young people, and you've seen some of them around me, that I've had that were since they were kindergarten through third grade. They're in college now. And I still get calls from them telling me about you know what they appreciate that I did for them mm -hmm. down through life. But we treat our young people as though they are somebody. We don't lord over them Amen. that we're so much better than they are because we cannot compare them with us. But we have to know that they are special in the name of God. And because they're special, God is going to take care of them. Yes, he is. And, and knowing that uh, the kid, a kid knowing that they have the backing of their parents give them a mental stability that we just can't comprehend. And they need to know that, hey, they have our backing. Okay. We've just been given the sign to go ahead and wrap it up. And, and I know this program has been a little bit different than what you normally get from us. But this is the time of year when our kids are looking for finals and getting into the last part, and some of them are really stretching to make it out of the one grade and get it get promoted to the next. So let us keep them in our prayer. Let us keep praying for them to continue. Man ought to always pray Amen. and not faint. Amen. So we're getting ready to get out of here, but we thank God for you. And, Pastor, anything else real quickly? Hey Amen. We just uh, thank God for you, and we're coming up back up uh, for our power nights. They're coming up, and we'll be having our— uh, power night the second Thursday of March. Uh, power night. We look forward to seeing you. All right. God bless you. And until next time, whatever you do, do it from the heart. God bless you. <laughs>